I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and welcome to Surviving Bad, where we explore Iowa's stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. Today, we explore the delicate, if not somewhat secretive, landscape of trauma with one of Iowa's foremost experts in trauma-informed care, Gladys Alvarez. She's co-authored two children's books, Grandma Mary Says Things Happen, A Guide to Help Children That Have Experienced Trauma, and Grandma Says Bullies Hurt. Let's meet Gladys Alvarez. Hello, Gladys. Welcome to the show. Hi, Peter. Thanks for having me. Hey, tell us a little bit about yourself, the journey that brought you to where you are today, and, and the things that, are, that you care about. Um, well, thank you again for having me. I am um, an independently licensed social worker in the state of Iowa since about 1987 or so. Um, I've been working at um, Orchard Place Child Guidance Center for the last 35 years. Um, I really got into uh, clinical social work because I wanted to help people um, solve problems um, and, and not solve them myself, but help them solve and, and think about um, things. Um, my specialty is working with little kids. Um, I like them because um, they're just easy to communicate with and they don't, they haven't had all of the um, don't tell this kind of stuff yet told to them. And so they're really open and honest in therapy. The other thing I like about uh, the work I do with families is I, I take a two generation approach. And so I not, don't just work with the kids. I work with um, their family system. And that's really important at Orchard Place, the family be involved in any therapy. In the last 10 years, I've become the Orchard Place um, Trauma-Informed Care Project Coordinator. Um, and so I've done a lot more trainings in, um, out in the community and um, actually nationwide on trauma and trauma-informed care, its impact on brain development and um, not just its impact on little kids, but relationships and, and worker performance and everything throughout um, our lives. Um, so I really enjoy educating people and helping people figure out systemic problems as well as uh, small systems like families. Yeah, when your name came up, it was from many sources and a lot of people have a tremendous amount of respect for what you do. Now, how, how would you define for, for people that may not work in a clinical setting, what trauma actually means from the point of view of the family and the child? Trauma is uh, something that is overwhelming to us. Um, something We can have trauma without being traumatized. Um, and that's an important distinction. Like a, a hurricane is a trauma, um, but not everyone who goes through the hurricane will become traumatized. Traumatization happens when your um, resources, be the internal resources or external resources, aren't um, able to cope with the bad stuff that happened and get you back to, um, quote, normal functioning types of things. So um, two people can go through the very same car accident, one come out, yeah, okay, we're fine. The other one come out really traumatized because their level of insecurity or fear or lack of safety was much higher um, and their resources may not be to the point that they can actually, you know, get a new car or whatnot. So it's really important when people are listening to other people's stories that they understand that if that person says it's a big deal, it's a big deal. Okay. So it's so it's fascinating because what you're <laughs> what you're saying to me is that you know our lives are filled with traumas, and and how we deal with them affects how they affect us. And, and but, but we don't always have the skill sets or the same kinds of skill sets as other people to right the skill sets or the resources available okay um if i have a, a good paying job and health insurance and i'm in an accident then i have some resources that i can deal with it and that's going to be much less stressful i mean it's going to still be stressful but it's not going to rise to the level of toxic stress but if i don't have um health insurance coverage, if I don't have, if I'm living paycheck to paycheck and, and a bad or traumatic stressful situation happens, then my resources, my external resources are less um, and that's going to impact me um, much more and, and be uh, more chronic stress. And, and um, that's the thing about trauma. One event may not hit you very hard, but if you have chronic stress over your lifetime, then that's going to um, have a lot of things to do with um, your health and things like that. The, the ACEs study, the Adverse Childhood Experience study, showed that, and that's like across um, demographics. 
You know, this is fascinating, and I want to take a short break here, but I want you to think about during this break the, a question I want to ask, and that's, you know, for for us adults or people in adulthood, young adulthood, we have sort of a framework for packaging trauma, good or bad or indifferent. But children are rather innocent, and and they don't have that framework. And mm. I'd like to address it after the break. And, you know, we'll see you all after the break. You don't want to miss this. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Right now, millions of people and billions of devices are connected to the internet. Homes, businesses, hospitals, schools. The security and reliability of these connections are more important than ever. That's why at Mediacom, we've built a network to protect them. A network that sees threats, fixes problems before they occur, and keeps you going with 99.99% network reliability. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. I'm your host, Peter Komandowski. We're talking with Gladys Alvarez about a problem, trauma, that has a powerful influence on people's lives and, and actually a very powerful influence on children's lives. Gladys, talk to us about what trauma looks like to a child. Well, for a kid, trauma um, looks like um, things are not going well or mom and dad are worried or something bad happened. And lots of times we try to protect kids by not telling them everything. And uh, the thing about kids is if they don't have information, they will make it up. I mean, not like lie, but they will fill in the gaps and, and make the story so that they, because they're trying to understand their reality and, and what's going on. So it's important for parents, um, caregivers, teachers, whoever, to understand that kids um, take their cues from the adults, okay? And um, it's important um, not to give them all kinds of big adult information, but to help them understand and make sense of what's happening in their life. Um, and to let them know that that they don't have to worry about it or that you can take care of it. Um, and if it is something they have to be concerned about, then give them the skills and the words to uh, talk about that. Now, as adults, though, I wonder how many of us get through a large portion of our lives where we start looking in the mirror and going, oh, boy, I wish I would have acted differently. And this is really critical with children. I mean, what kind of, what kind of looking in the mirror play things should especially parents of young children, be thinking about when they're talking to themselves about how should I act in front of my child to have a healthy child? Right. So again, it's not, uh, we don't want to be superhuman because everybody makes mistakes, right? So the most important part um, is that relationship piece, whether you're talking about uh, with your kids or your coworkers, your spouse, your significant other, and to be honest and go back and do that repair. If you goofed up, then own it and say, shouldn't have yelled at you. I'm really sorry. Mommy was just really stressed because she lost her car keys. And then you were asking me questions and I was nervous and I'm really sorry. When you do that, it helps kids know that it's okay to make a mistake and it's fixable, right? It's okay to own that. Um, the other thing is for, as parents, to just model um, taking some deep breaths. You know, if you can't handle it right now, say, you know, mommy's got to take five minutes. I'll be right back kind of thing and go and take your own time out. 
you know, go and breathe, go into the bathroom, scream, whatever you need to do to be able to come back and, and reset. And uh, that teaches kids that it's okay to take a break. It's okay to go into your room without being told to go into your room, okay? Um, and to actually use feeling words. It's really important to develop that um, ability to talk with our kids. So when you think about a child and a parent, and you're in a situation where your way of dealing with it might be, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it, everything's going to be okay. That's not necessarily owning up to it. That's letting the child then fill in the blanks like you talked about before. It is kind of. And, and again, you don't want to give them like all of the nitty gritty adult information like we're behind on the mortgage, I can't pay the car. I mean, that's too much. Um, but, you know, just kind of a general... Um, you know, mom is working on a lot of problems right now, but um, we have a system in place and um, you as a kid, you don't need to worry about it because you can still play. You're still going to get fed. You're, you know, there's nothing that you need to do. Now, children have an inherently limitless amount of trust in their parents. Um, is that trust something that can be undermined if you're not owning up to some of these things and dealing with children? Can you diminish the trust connection with a child if you're not dealing with those stresses and traumas properly? You can. Um, kids will catch parents in, um, in a lie <laughs> or in not being truthful, you know. And for kids, it's kind of a conflict like, but I thought you said we had to tell the truth, and so how come you didn't tell me the truth kind of thing? It's like... Um, telling kids not to hit each other and then giving them a spanking. It's like, okay, I mean, what is that about? You know, you get to hit me, but I can't hit my sibling, you know, because usually parents, you know, spank and they're angry when they're doing it, you know? And so for a kid, they don't often have the cognitive skills to differentiate the two. So, so let's now move into the landscape of trauma-informed care. Um, you know, there is, there become these interventions where you are involved with children. I mean, what are some of the precipitates of those interventions? What, what brings a child to, to a, a session where they would be needing therapy for trauma? Oh, there are many reasons a kid would come into therapy. Um, it might be as uh, simple, and I say simple, not that it's not important, but as simple as somebody very important to them died and they're having a real hard time dealing with that death um, and the grief. Um, it could be an abuse and neglect situation. Um, it could be uh, something traumatic around uh, a, a natural disaster and they've lost everything and, and they're really having a hard time um, dealing with that. It might just be that they really are a very anxious, high wired kind of kid. And so they're just worried about everything and their parents are bringing them um, in to help them cope with that anxiety or, or depression. Types of All right, well, let's take a short break. When we come back, let's have you share with us what sort of the trauma-informed care practice is like and what you do with people. Thank you all for being with us. We're going to see you after the break. You don't want to miss this. While a lot is changing in our world, at Mediacom, our focus remains the same, making sure you have the fastest, most reliable connection possible. During this critical time, we know your needs are changing. You may be working or learning from home, relying on telemedicine, or finding new ways to keep everyone entertained. If you need more speed, call or go online, and Mediacom will double your speed immediately for as low as $10 more a month for one year. Right now, millions of people and billions of devices are connected to the internet. Homes, businesses, hospitals, schools. The security and reliability of these connections are more important than ever. That's why at Mediacom, we've built a network to protect them. A network that sees threats, fixes problems before they occur, and keeps you going with 99.99% network reliability. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% network reliability. 
So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. We're talking with Gladys Alvarez, and we're looking at something every Iowa needs to know, how to deal with trauma. And central to that idea is something that Gladys is an expert in. It's called self-care. You know, it's fascinating to think about self-care because that's a form of empowerment that I think everybody can understand. Can you share more about that with us? I'm glad you labeled it as a form of empowerment because oftentimes people think self-care is being selfish right? And they really shouldn't take time to do that for themselves uh, because they've got lots to do. They've got people depending on them, you know, work, all kinds of demands on their time. But what we need to remember is that if we don't take care of ourselves, then um, we run the risk of not having anything um, of getting sick, really, because our body has a physiological response to stress. And if we don't do something with that stress, our body will decide what to do with it, okay? Um, it can only handle so much stress. And if we're full, things like we'll start getting headaches, stomach aches, um, irritable bowel syndrome, things like that, heart problems. Um, so we really do want to be proactive and take care of ourselves because we, we, in order to take care of other people, we need to have our own jar full uh, type of thing. So self-care is, is a must. It's not a luxury. It is an absolute um, must item. And what are, what are the different uh, pathways to trauma, to trauma-informed care that people can use in terms of guidelines or what they need to be conscious of? Right. So um, trauma-informed care is really a broad concept. It's an organizational approach. Um, and so if an organization or system is practicing trauma-informed care, that means they're looking at the impact of trauma on their clients, um, patients, students, whatever they call the people, their consumers, as well as impact on their employees and the organization. So it's a, it's a two-way street. And all of the things like making sure people feel safe, uh, trusted, collaboration, given choices, all of those are being operated on both sides of that coin. If an agency is just practicing trauma-informed interventions, that's really good, but that's more uh, consumer-oriented. So um, evidence-based practices like trauma-focused high to behavior therapy or um, EMDR or uh, things like that are things that we can do, different therapeutic practices we can do with individuals to help them with their stress. Um, and both are good. And those interventions that you talked about, those are more crisis oriented then, I would suspect. Not necessarily. They're just types of therapeutic interventions to help individuals deal with a traumatic issue or deal with some, some life um, stressor that's going on that's... Uh, just creating issues for them. Maybe they can't um, get it out of their mind. It just it's a um, a persistent thought. It, it interferes with with things. And so those are. It doesn't necessarily be have to be way 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 crisis oriented. You know, I noticed that you talked about organizational structure. To me, it sounded a lot like teamwork. Like when you have an organization that's focused on trauma informed care, everybody's sort of coming from the same place in the same direction. And I know in some of the things that we've researched on what you do is that you sort of build that kind of teamwork between families too. Yes. It's not where a person plugs into your care and then they just go home alone. I mean, you're really looking at this on a very holistic level. How does that work for a family? Yes, it's really important that um, particularly, well, when you work with anyone, but particularly when you're working with kiddos who don't, um, they don't generally, they don't, they can't vote. They don't generally have the final say at home, right? So. If they're working on an issue and they're changing how they're thinking about um, the situation or the problem, um, they've learned coping skills, but they're going back into the same environment that has not changed or look at things differently, that's not going to be healthy or helpful. And so it's important to include that entire family system in, in therapy, in how, how are we looking at this, how are we framing it up, what are we doing about it, and what are we all doing to make changes? Because it's not usually just the kids that need to make changes in the environment. So, so sort of the entryway into this house called a family may not be the child. It could be somebody else, but the child is still 
in sort of in, involved in this process of building this competency in in care? It is, it is, because some oftentimes what we work on is helping the kiddo know that adults can be trusted and it is okay to ask your mom or dad about things. It is okay to voice concerns appropriately. You know, those that's a great point. Um, I'd like to invite you back after the break to share advice with people about dealing with trauma and, and self-care. After a short break, we'll have Gladys back to share her final comments, some good advice. You don't want to miss this. We'll see you all after the break. I don't know how we would have survived without Mediacom. We, uh, we have five kids, my wife and I, and we have Mediacom for all of our internet and all of our, uh, our cable services. So I'm stuck in my house, but at the same time, I'm connected to people all over the world, and it's been fantastic. Thanks to Mediacom, I've had reliable internet um, to continue to work business as usual that I can continue to provide for, for myself and my family. Right now, we all feel like the world is in a standstill. Um, the internet has played a huge role in allowing us to stay connected to our jobs and the kids schooling online and finding fun and creative ways to stay connected with the ones that we love. We couldn't do it without Mediacom. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. And surviving bad we're taking a moment to talk about finding hope and inspiration in the face of trauma let's hear some advice our guest gladys has to offer information that may make a difference in someone's life and someone you love gladys what kind of advice would you like to share with our audience today i think one of the most important things is to help you everyone know to it is important to take care of your own emotional, physical, um, psychological health. Because even if you're not sick, doesn't mean you're healthy. Okay, there are many components of our life that we need to address, and it's important for parents to help kids learn that because kids don't get right that they don't have the skill to regulate themselves at birth. Okay, that's why babies cry. That's their way of telling us. I need something and you have to help me figure it out kind of thing. And so we pick them up and we sort out all of that. Um, so regulation comes from the outside in. Um, and so it's important to attune to our kids and to each other um, and use those feeling words. Okay. What I find with kids is if you ask them, you know, kind of looks like you're scared. If they're not scared, they'll say, I am not, you know, kind of thing. And they'll tell you what they are. So don't be afraid to actually ask and talk about it. Um, the other thing is just don't be afraid to have those conversations and to actually be able to put some electronics aside and just do some face-to-face -face relationship work, you know, uh, play a game, play go fish, you know, um, play solitaire, play, play Uno, whatever, you know, where you have to have some fun and laugh. Laughter is the best medicine for, for self-care. Um, and it's important to have a written down self-care plan. Okay. So that you're actually thinking about what kinds of things can I do to get unstressed? You know, for me, one of my things is to uh, go have a, uh, a root beer, which kind of sounds silly, 
But my grandpa used to take us to A&W when I was little. And so when I drink root beer, it brings back all of those warm, loving memories and just really calms me down on a stressful day. So it doesn't have to be anything magical. Now, now we know when a child cries, obviously, we've all grown up with that. When a child gets a little older and they become a teen, what would we sort of associate with what crying is? What kind of behavior would be a signal that they need some of this care and, mm -hmm. and love and feeling words? Um, yelling, stomping off, you know, um, being adamantly saying, no, you can't make me types of things. So their behaviors, um, sneaking out maybe even, um, testing limits, um, those, those behaviors tell parents, I need a little more supervision. I need a little more support from you. I need something from you. It's fascinating because, you know, we, as raising children, we hear like things about the terrible threes, but they're really, they're more, it's the parents that have to learn how to manage a child that now can expand its universe, go further, touch more, see more, taste more. Um, now, when, when it comes to getting involved in a care system like what you do with a teen, because a lot of parents get frustrated. They run into a wall with their kids. These, this, We know what the symptoms are then, like you've described them. We run into them. But getting over that's a really big barrier. What can they do? I, I think it's really important to be open to that communication, to be open to talk. And instead of, instead of um, yelling at them, which isn't going to be helpful because that'll just shut their uh, frontal lobe off and they'll go into a fight, flight, freeze and... Uh, escalate, but do some reflective, you know, I understand that you're angry. Let's talk about it. Okay. You know, so again, using those feeling words, dealing with the feeling, not the behavior, what's around, what's going on. What is the need that needs to be met? That is such an important point, And it's a great one for us to end the show on. There's so much information here. And I know we're going to share your website and contact information for people that are interested in more. Thank you all for joining us today. You can go to our website at healthyiowa.org for more information as well. Keep your eye on Mediacom MC22 for our next episode of Surviving Bad, where we explore Iowa stories of survival, hope, and inspiration on Mediacom MC22, your local programming leader.